Welcome back to Morning Joy, where truth matters. I'm Keith Downey, your host, and we just recently celebrated Veterans Day. And we know veterans fight for a cause, but what do we fight for in our own lives? We got Julie Carrick, who's going to be talking all about that and more. Good morning, Julie Carrick. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, you know, just having had Veterans Day on Monday, and I know last week we had a wonderful conversation in the clubhouse mm-hmm. and, you know, sharing some of those phenomenal stories, um, especially with priests who are also military. Um, You know, my husband, my son, my dad, so many of my family members were military. And so to honor them on a day like um, Veterans Day, it's very meaningful. And, And when we go into that deep meaning of what it means to be a veteran, I always think of, you know, when I heard my son swear in to the Air Force, you know, 10 years ago, and to hear him say that, and, you know, he's willing to give his life in service of our country. And they literally sign a blank check. You know, the, the government, our country can ask anything of them. And they do it, you know, to, to defend us against enemies, foreign and domestic, right? And then when we look at that in regard to our Catholic life, um, to truly live what we have been given the example by Christ who who literally came and died for us. It wasn't a matter of if he was going to die, but that he literally came to die for us, to be the ransom for our sin. And when I hear some of the banter right now on different social media and sadly between family members, you know, there's such a discord in our country right now. It's it's heartbreaking, to be honest. And I, I want to ask the question today, what are you willing to die for? Like, what is so important that you are willing to go to battle in the way that the verbiage and the, the demeanor of people is happening right now? What are you willing to die for? Or what is that battle in your life that you are, that you need God in order to come to the other side of it? And, you know, on my program, We Sing Our Faith, I've shared a couple of times when it's been near the anniversary of like Holy Thursday or then the Feast of Corpus Christi. Those two days are very significant in my Catholic life, obviously because of the Eucharistic life. But the battle that I fought back in 2008 was the battle of lung cancer. And the dates that were so defined for me in that battle were the day that I ended up going into the hospital for the surgery to remove my right lung, which is where the cancer was. Um, it was, it was an amazing, um, journey of faith. And when I left the hospital, um, nine days after that, that thoracotomy, um, the doctor said, we don't know, um, if you're ever going to be able to sing again, because having the right lung gone, um, is very different singing breath is very different than regular breathing, you know, walking, exercising, that type of thing. Um, But it was on the feast of Corpus Christi. It wasn't six months or a year. It was just weeks later that God had restored my ability and actually gave me three additional notes in order to, Hmm. um, to keep singing. So it became very clear to me, I wasn't done yet, (laughs) right? That I was still supposed to use my gift in order to share the beauty of God in the way that he was calling me to. And the what kind of ties these focuses together today is Psalm 91. Mm-hmm. Because in the, the beauty of the work that I've done in parish missions, in conferences and speaking engagements around the world for the military, I learned that Psalm 91 is called the warrior's psalm or the warrior's prayer. And they, they utilize this beautiful, powerful psalm. And to give you an idea of why that's such a thing, so the verbiage is, um, as it begins, if you live in the shelter of Elyon and make your home in the shadow of Shaddai, you can say to God, my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And then the first line of it after that is, he rescues you from the snares of the fowlers hoping to destroy you. He covers you with his pinions and you find shelter underneath his wings. You need not fear the terror of the night nor the arrows flying in the daytime, neither the plague stalking in the night nor the scourge that wreaks havoc in the light of day. 
you can say to God, my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And so when we think of words like that in Psalm 91, and I, I think I'm going to encourage everybody listening today, take your Bible out, open up Psalm 91. Um, you probably know this as a song on Eagle's Wings, right? A, a number of people know the song mm -hmm. on Eagle's Wings and it's lovely and it's beautiful, but I want you to read the text, to read it. And then as you're reading it, what are those things that you are so fearful of right now? What are those things that are causing this anxiety and this unrest in our country? You know, we've just had this election cycle. We have new people that are going to be coming into office in January. We see some that are already transitioning and trying to already make a difference in our country and in our world. Um, and instead of being angry and aggressive and fighting, because quite frankly, I think it's based in fear. Um, I think so many people are afraid that their natural response is fight or flight. You know, and again, that takes us to that military focus that we just had on Monday of the veterans. There's that natural fight or, or flight. And instead of that, why are we not looking at the words of Psalm 91 to say, my refuge, my strength, my God in whom I trust? You know, I, I pray for our elected officials. I, I literally pray for people who create anxiety in my life. Um, it was it was funny when I when I went into the operating room in 2008 and we were starting the, the surgery, a good friend of mine, Father Killian, um, he said, you know, you need to ask your surgeon if you can ask God's blessings on his hands before he starts the surgery. And my surgeon is Jewish. <laughs> and I said, so, um, you know, Dr. Steinberg, is it going to be okay with you if I ask God's blessing on your hands? And he looked at me and he says, I've never had anyone do that before. <laughs> I don't know what that looks like. And I said, well, I got to be honest. You know, I'm a little apprehensive about having the surgery. I mean, I know I need it. I know that the cancer has to come out. Um, I'm tired of battling it with the all the other treatments that we're trying that aren't working. So I know this is the right step. But how do we... Um, how do we in confidence go into this without, without the fear? And I really feel blessing of the hands is going to do it. And so he was amazing. And, and I said, if it's all right with you, I will use the sign of the cross because I am a Catholic woman. And he put his hands out and I just, you know, I just made the sign of the cross on his hands. And I said, dear God, just bless this surgeon, bless his hands so that as he removes this from my body today, I will be able to continue singing your praises and, and that you will use me however I'm supposed to be used for the good in this world. And when I finished praying, you know, he looked at his hands and he goes, I'm ready. Like I am more ready than I've ever been ready to do something like this before. And it was wonderful. Like it, it gave me a sense of peace and such a traumatic moment. You know, it, it truly gave me that peace. And so whatever it is that you're dealing with today, whatever anxiety, whatever fear, whatever distrust, whatever, whatever that thing is in your life, and it could be the, the, you know, the political temperament right now, it could be a personal thing, it could be a health thing, it could be a financial thing. Um, you know, a dear, dear friend recently said that there has been such a brokenness in their family because of a, and sadly it was political, a conversation that went very dark and they ended up having this hard, hard, you know, conversation that right now her son won't even speak to them. And I said, it should never be that way. We should never have a, yeah. um, a something in our world that takes a family apart. And so again, go to the Psalm 91, read the the power of it um here's here's the line that i just i love this this part of it no disaster can ever overtake you no plague come near your dwelling he will put you in his angel's charge to guard you wherever you go they will support you on their hands in case you hurt your foot against a stone you will tread on adder and lion trample wild dragons and lions you will say to god my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And what, what I love in Psalm 91, and when I did the recording of this, 
I asked Michael Poirier, who's another Catholic artist and, and good friend, if he would be the voice of God in this part of the psalm. So I'm singing and you, you'll hear in the recording of it, um, and you can just go to YouTube, Julie Carrick, Psalm 91, and listen to the beauty of it. But when Michael sings the voice of God, um, I say, and, and, and God says, and then Michael sings the part of God, I rescue all who cling to me. I protect all who know my name. I answer all who beseech me. I am with them when they are in trouble. I bring them safety and honor. I give them life long and full and show them how I can save. And then we go to that little response, my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. I mean, to me, that that's one of the Psalms where we literally hear God respond inside of it. And as the psalmist was writing this in that you can hear the plea, you can hear the need for protection, you can hear the need for God to sustain and guide and direct and move in our life. And then you hear him literally say that part of it. And I don't know, it's it's one of my favorites. And, and again, going through a um, a big difficulty. It's one of those Psalms that can make such a difference in our daily prayer life. So yeah. th there's actually proof medically that when you pray through illness, there is a definite better response in how the body reacts to whether it's a surgery, medication, whatever the treatments are. It's, it's proof that prayer truly takes us through all of those anxieties and those, dis you know, those, um, those difficulties. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's incredible. I didn't know that. Well, we'll make sure to uh, get the song that you're talking about, Psalm 91, on our show notes. So that way people can, can listen and, and view it. It's really powerful. But uh, thank you so much, Julie. Hey, if you are going to be joining us after this short little break, make sure to tune in because we've got a whole other hour of truth and joy coming up. Otherwise, uh, you might be on your way to work, dropping your kids off at school. We get it. Maybe you're another cup of coffee. Uh, if that's the case, we want to just say, of course, God bless and make it a joyful weekend yeah, make it a joyful weekend and we'll see you bright and early on Monday. Otherwise, hang tight. We'll see you right after this break here on Morning Joy, where truth matters.